अच्छा डोला माइक में now there is another that is a smelting what is a smelting have you studied today about this i no 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 okay to see what is smelting so basically process of converting metal oxide into metal and how it can be converted by using suitable reducing agent metal using a suitable reducing agent and this is known as a smelting like if you are going to the reducing agent i am going to give some example generally we use reducing agent that is used is basically carbon carbon monoxide and aluminum and here you can see example i am going to take is if you are zno and you are going to react this with carbon so carbon is more reducing it is a reducing agent it will act as a reducing agent so it will reduce zinc oxide to zinc and it will convert itself into co and this is your zincate and this is your zincate and if you are going to react sno2 with again carbon so what will happen this is basically tin stone the ore has a name that is tin stone oh. and it will be converted into sn plus co and if you are going to again react with o2 if there will be any uh, if it, if it will sense any type of oxygen there it will convert it into co2 and it will be epon so basically a smelting is a process in which we convert metal oxide into metal by using some suitable reducing agent okay okay yeah so can i change the slide have you studied the notes or have you seen the notes or you don't get time for that oh uh, yeah i have seen notes yeah okay okay so can i change the slide yes 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 okay now you can see <clears throat> a smelting how we do purification with the help of a smelting it's very easy so i'm going to write a smelting using aluminium and this process is basically important and its name is gold cement what you are going to read this can you read it a uh, gold cement cement aluminum thermite process thermite process to see what will happen metal oxide will give if you are going to react this metal oxide with aluminum so metal oxide will be converted into metal reduced to metal A aluminum will be converted into al2o2 <clears throat> okay and generally let me write it in a full sentence it's very important so we are not going to use shortcut here so i can write metal oxide on reduction metal oxide on reduction with aluminum powder gives mat and this method is used for this method is for extraction of metals like chromium iron manganese silicon as for example as you can see if you are going to react this aluminum with cr2o3 
which is metal oxide and you are going to heat it you will get l2o3 this will be reduced to 2cr and the reaction here is delta x that is negative what does this represent delta is negative that is releasing energy so releasing energy that means basically it is exothermic process right yeah 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 okay that means basically aluminium is acting as reducing agent so can you go, uh, can you write this or can you write the product for all this reaction i think you oh, can okay, do this. yeah 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 Uh, for M N three or for how would it be? M N three, the product is uh, you can see this is your L two O three, right? Yeah. And here, here aluminium only one uh, forms only one type of oxide, so it will be similar in all these cases. Are you getting my point? Wait, but it will be like similar. Four oxygen on the left side. No problem. You can balance it by your own. Oh, okay. okay. Are you getting my point? Yes. You can balance it. Okay. Like if you want to balance it, there is four oxygen. There is only one oxygen, so you are going to multiply it by two. Yeah. And yeah. here you are going to now it is I think two three is a six oxygen. So you need to balance it, and I think you can do this by yeah, uh, because it is heat and fire. Right. Yeah. Very good. So please do write it. This is thermite process that I told you. Yes. Yeah. Done. We also did the uh, self reduction, auto redox reaction, right? Oh, uh, yeah, self reduction reactions in those things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, just let me see what we need to do. Zone refining, okay, okay. Just give me a minute. purification okay so we are done up to this part and then after this we are going to do refining okay we okay. are all done with all this uh, concentration of ore then reduction of ore then there comes a refining okay. and as you can see refining is basically wait a minute my chart laptop so I was for, uh, forgot to switch on it. Okay. So as you can see, the refining that means crude metal to pure metal. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. What does uh, crude metal mean? Crude metal that means uh, what we say uh, after reduction. Okay. okay. Okay, am I busy? Sorry, no, uh, no, 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 there was the power cut of that. So, I have to stop the video now. It's <clears throat> okay, so refining, and it is from crude metal into pure matter pure matter and i think it's very easy there are process that we do refining so basically what it is it is basically a removal of unwanted substance from impure matter or crude matter so after reduction you get crude matter 
and we do refining to remove some of the unwanted substances from the crude metal and then you get pure metal so what is the process first is concentration of ore then reduction of ore and yeah. after this you do a refining and there are ways or number of methods for this refining in which methods of refining you can see <clears throat> there is uh, liquidation mm, liquidation distillation then comes your third electrolytic refining you have seen this yeah yeah yes then comes your zone refining it is the most important in board and it's very easy then comes your vapor phase refining chromatography and all this chromatography we will see about so davis <clears throat> is my video lagging and uh, no 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 Okay, because uh, uh, from my side it's lagging, <laughs> so that's why I asked. So, distillation, right. distillation. Have you seen distillation? You know what is distillation? Yes. I think yeah. you know what is distillation. So let's just start with this and liquidation. And it's very easy. What is liquidation? So. there is a, a term reverberatory furnace we use reverberatory furnace or this refining will be in reverberatory furnace and there is a slopy hearth we say the surface is slopy and here you are going to give heat and there is a container in which you are putting the after A reduction the ore you are going to put it here okay are you getting okay. my point impure yeah. metal ore impure metal ore because you already uh, reduced it so it is metal and it is impure so if you are going to put it here and then there is then there is like this and then there is a container that is there. so if you are going to heat it all the muds or the impurities will melt and it will go here but the metal which has melting point more than the more than the impurities will be here are okay. you getting my point yes yeah so basically or you can either uh, do it in this uh, other way generally we do it for low melting point so basically used for generally this method used for metals having low melting point. having low melting point so see having low melting point what does it means if a metals which have low melting point it will melt down and it will go in the in this container and you will get a uh, pure metal are you getting my point as for example we do it for tin lead and bismuth got okay. it okay. generally we do we do it for low melting point so can i change the slide yeah yeah so here you also need to take care that uh, impurities have higher melting point than metal impurities yes. having <coughs> high melting high melting point than metals it can be asked yeah okay after this we are going to going for distillation can i change the slide yeah 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 after this chapter which chapter we are going to see uh, complete i forgot uh okay i did check it there yeah okay we will check off okay yes, no problem distillation so see there is a fractional distillation and there is a distillation what is the difference between them so this point is quite important i would recommend you to uh, write it okay fractional distillation fractional distillation 
is used when boiling point difference when boiling point difference is less than 25 units is less than 25 units if the boiling uh, both the uh, distillation and fractional distillation is for the solution in which the components must have different boiling points if the boiling point different is less than 25 units then we say fractional or we do fractional distillation and if it is more than more than 25 units distillation is used when boiling point difference is 25 units is 25 units is more than basically you can say is more than 25 units okay okay and it is very easy i think you know uh, if you have a container in which if you have a container in which a and b is present and if you have uh, this has a 100 degree centigrade and in this way this has a uh, let's say 65 degree centigrade you are going to heat it at a temperature of 65 degree centigrade b will come here and you are going to cool it here so b will go here in vapor form and then cool that means it will be in liquid if you are going yeah. to cool it all the b will be here and a will be here left here is how we do a refining uh, with the help of distillation or fractional distillation okay yeah yeah okay generally distillation is used for the elements that are liquid at room temperature this is also very important so we can write distillation is used for the elements that are liquid at room temperature that are liquids at room temperature or can be converted to liquid at room temperature so it's very easy okay <clears throat> so Please write it. These three points are quite important. Uh, yeah, done. <clears throat> Very good. So this is your distillation. After this, we have uh, basically set up the setup I made is the, it will be just like same, but uh, the drawings are different in books. If you're going to see, there will be beaker and then there will be uh, what we say collector and then condensator and then receiving flask and all, but the process will be same, okay? Oh, okay. 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 Now see. The next refining is electrolytic refining. Electrolytic refining. Sorry. You see, no. this is your electrolytic refining. Yeah. So how we do electrolytic refining, it's very important. We have already read about this in electrochemistry, electrolysis, right? So yes. there was a container. There was a container in which we had cathode and anode, right? 
Yeah. And generally, we make this uh, a node uh, thicker than this cat or cat or is basically a thinner. And you can see it is negatively and it is positively because it is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and it is negative terminal of the battery and this is your anode and this is your cathode, right? Yeah. Now, important point is that should the Okay, this is cathode. Now see, yeah. important point is that impure metal, you are going to make this a node with impure metal. That means basically whatever you have got after reduction, that will be made of a node. No, basically a node is made up of that impure matter. Got oh, it? Yeah. And Again, the metal which is impure, the pure form of that impure metal should be cathode. Yeah. Are you getting my point? And then yes. again, salt of same matter, salt of same matter. That means the solution that you are going to use in this, that should be same. Okay. Uh, same so, as in like like uh, if you have uh, if you want to refine Ag, then it should be Ag you know, three. Oh, if you okay. want to refine uh, Zn, then it should be ZnSO4. Yes. Are you getting my point? This is it. so. First of all, I'm going to write used for uh, refine. Or uh, yeah, this is right. Used to refine. Elements like. Copper and zinc. And the impurities you can see impurities like antimony, selenium, tellurium, Ag, Au, Pt are left behind, or you can say we call it sometimes anode mud. That means near anode. <clears throat> okay. So these three points are very important. Have you written it? <laughs> uh, yeah, those three are those three. <laughs> very good. So what will happen? You know that there will be uh, oxidation of this impure metal and it will come here and then there will be like this. Are you getting my point? It becomes thick, uh, thinner after some time and it becomes thicker so yeah, this yeah. is how we get the pure metal form so it's very easy yes can i change the slide oh uh, yeah yeah yes now the next is zone refining and it's also very easy And it is most of the uh, <coughs> one of the most modern method for refining. We use modern method. It is okay. Now impurities. Are more soluble in mat. Impurities are more soluble in matter. And also we can write, I will represent it, just write it with me. Impurities yeah. get concentrated at one end and that end is cut off. That end is cut off. Then the next is Highly pure semiconductors are obtained like 
जर्मेनियम सिलिकॉन बेरिलियम गैलियम एंड इंडियम now see how we do this is a semiconductor that we get okay so see uh -huh. this is your the uh, most modern method that will be basically your uh, zone refining so now you are having an arc like this or yeah. a ring like this and this is the metal that you have okay okay and it is basically impure you know that this is your impure matter yeah 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 now what you are going to do it's very easy you are and this is basically burning that means it is at high temperature you are just going to move it back and forth ah yeah, yeah yes and as you know that the impurities are more soluble in metal so basically it is soluble and it melts and it goes with this are you getting my point if it is going on right hand side it will go with it and you are going to at the end you are going to just cut it when the impurities will be at one place okay, okay. are you getting my point and this yeah. is the this is what we call zone refining okay so we can also write zone refining is impurities dissolves impurities dissolves and leaching this is the difference that you need to take care leaching is metal dissolves metal dissolves in leaching we uh, we saw that uh, metals are more dissolvable or soluble than the impurities but here in zone refining impurities dissolves and after moving it you uh, when the impurities are with this then we cut it then okay. impurities get detached okay yeah so this is the difference between zone refining and leaching which is very very important okay fine yeah please keep it in mind or can we have for two hours class on sunday uh, sunday yeah is that free or busy for you uh, oh okay okay like including wait including uh, like but like uh, immediately after the, this class like on sunday there is like max class so that has to all be oh. shifted no no problem then wait a minute let me erase this so which day on this day you are free there is no no wait uh, let me see <clears throat> yeah this friday yeah no <laughs> friday i uh, will not be available only this week no problem we will have some other day classes okay okay see vapor phase refining which is also very important and here we can see metal is converted into volatile compound first you need to compound uh, convert the that crude metal into volatile compound and then decompose then decompose to give pure metal 
pure nut and generally we use it for used for a refining nickel zirconium and titanium okay we do this after for this three matters <clears throat> now see it's also very important to note that we used for removing oxygen and nitrogen as impurities <clears throat> used for <clears throat> removing oxygen and nitrogen as impurities <clears throat> now there are two methods which is very important uh, methods of vapor phase refining and the first method is mons process and this mons process is for nickel and the second one is van arkel method which is for zirconium and titanium zirconium and titanium okay. and it's very easy you just need to take care that uh, whatever is the metal that you have i'm going to switch off my video because it's lagging hanging wait a minute for a while okay so <clears throat> can you see the screen the screen share is working yeah, yeah can you see the screen yeah. now see Mons process, and you have to remember this Mons process is for nickel. So I'm going to write Mons process for nickel. So in Mons process <coughs> reactions, I'm going to write reactions. Ni is going to, we are going, uh, this Ni is basically your uh, crude metal. First, you are going to convert it into. A volatile compound. So I'm going to react it with carbon monoxide at 350 Kelvin. And you are going to convert it into a complex compound that is NiCO4, which is a volatile unstable compound. Volatile unstable complex, you can say. And after this complex formation, you are going to react uh, basically heat it at 470 Kelvin. At 470 Kelvin. And then you will get your pure matter. Then you will get your pure matter. Okay. This is highly pure. Okay. Highly pure. Highly pure. And then there is another product that is CO, carbon monoxide. So please do write it. Okay. And it will be uh, released along with O2 and N. <clears throat> okay. So this is Mons process. After this, man, Arkel method. Okay, fine. Yeah. Can you change this slide? Uh, wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> yeah, okay, done. Now see, the next is Van Arkel Van Arkel's method. And it is for for zirconium and titanium. I told you. Zirconium plus 2I2. Reacting. First, you are going to convert it into a complex. Heat it at seven, uh, 870 Kelvin. 
then you will be getting zr i4 zr i4 and if you are going to again heat it at 2075 kelvin then you will be getting the pure metal zirconium and then two i only the, the difference is that and this uh, only the difference is that this is your crude metal and this is your pure metal and this iodine will be along with o2 and n along with ah. o2 and n okay yeah so <clears throat> you can see the reaction is same but this is your crude metal and this is your what pure i told metal. you this is your pure metal again if you have titanium so this is your titanium again you are going to react it with i2 to i2 at <clears throat> 500 Kelvin at 500 Kelvin and then you will get a complex TiI4 and after getting this you are going to heat it at 1700 Kelvin then you will be getting Ti plus 2i along with along with O2 and N. Okay. Okay. So it's very, very easy. Yeah. Please do write it. So on uh, Sunday, what time do you have class of maths? Uh, it is... Um... Okay, wait. One minute. Just, just after chemistry? Yeah, just after... Yeah, Sunday is just after... It's like... Um... Uh, wait, wait. Yeah, nine thirty. Okay. Yeah. You are in India or? No, I I am in uh, Saudi, but yeah, I told it in Indian time, IST. Okay, okay, okay. thank you. No problem. Uh, yeah, done. So on Sunday we are going to study it. Uh, because I'm not uh, well today, I need to go to a doctor or take medicines. Okay. So, so can I extend for 10 to 20 minutes on Sunday? Yeah, 